Hello, and welcome to this video presentation on third trimester bleeding. My name is Dr. Kimberly Cheatham. The objectives for this presentation are listed here. Bleeding in the third trimester of pregnancy is common and potentially can be catastrophic. Recognizing the more common causes for third trimester bleeding can assist the clinician in management of these challenging patients. The differential diagnosis for third trimester bleeding is long, and the cause of bleeding may or may not be related to the pregnancy. However, bleeding that occurs in pregnancy should be assumed to be pregnancy-related until proven otherwise. As with other situations that involve a bleeding patient, evaluation should initially begin with an assessment of the patient's vital signs and determination of any ongoing bleeding. Immediate evaluation of the fetus is also indicated. Review of prenatal records, a focus history, and a physical examination should be performed, taking note of the information listed on this slide. Speculum and digital vaginal examinations should not be performed until placental location is verified and previa is ruled out. If any significant bleeding has occurred, intravenous access should be established and fluids given. An ultrasound can evaluate the placenta and fetal status. Other laboratory that can be ordered to assist in the workup is listed on this slide. One of the most significant causes of third trimester bleeding is a placenta previa. Placenta previa is defined as a placenta that is implanted over or near the cervical os, which is an abnormal location. Risk factors for previa are listed below. There are different classifications for placenta previa, which are described here. Here is an illustration of the different types of placenta previa. A placenta previa is diagnosed by ultrasound. Because ultrasounds are frequently performed in pregnancy, the diagnosis is usually made before any bleeding has occurred. When bleeding does occur, it is typically painless. If a pelvic examination is performed in a patient with a placenta previa, the placental tissue over the os can be disrupted, leading to catastrophic bleeding. Thus, it's important to avoid pelvic examination in a pregnant patient with third trimester bleeding until placenta previa has been ruled out. Once bleeding associated with a placenta previa has occurred, management includes admission to the hospital with stabilization of the patient. The first episode of bleeding from a previa will usually stop on its own. If the fetus is preterm and both the patient and the fetus are stable, the patient will be kept in the hospital on bed and pelvic rest until delivery. Delivery is performed via cesarean section, usually around 35 to 36 weeks. Waiting any longer increases the risk of a life-threatening bleed. If heavy bleeding recurs or if the patient or fetus is not stable, delivery will be performed by cesarean section. The risks of placenta previa are mostly related to blood loss for the mom and prematurity of the fetus. The second important diagnosis to rule out in a patient who presents with third trimester bleeding is placental abruption. An abruption is an abnormally premature separation of a normally located placenta. The placenta can separate partially, leading to several possible outcomes, or it can separate fully, leading to fetal death. In contrast to the painless vaginal bleeding that occurs with a placenta previa, an abruption is associated with significant abdominal pain and a variable amount of bleeding. Bleeding during an abruption varies because blood may be concealed behind the placenta and never come out through the vagina. Typically, however, some amount of vaginal bleeding occurs during a placental abruption. Risk factors for placental abruption are listed here, the most common being the presence of hypertension. In contrast to the ultrasound diagnosis of a placenta previa, the diagnosis of a placental abruption is almost always clinical. Ultrasound may be normal during an abruption, so a high index of suspicion is necessary with third trimester patients who have abdominal pain, contractions, and vaginal bleeding, especially if the fetal heart rate shows decelerations. 
Management of large and small placental abruptions is reviewed here. This table contrasts major differences between placenta previa and placental abruption. This concludes this presentation on third trimester bleeding.